Here we are at the booth of Fraunhofer, and those are the really smart guys in Germany that come up with these crazy, incredible audio algorithms, and lots of other stuff too. I'm here with Alexander Zink. Hi, Alexander, how are you? Good to meet you, I'm fine, and you? Alex or Alexander? It's Alex for you. Okay. <laughs> Alex, I'm doing great. So the sh here at the show at the uh, IBC, you're showing off a number of technologies, but one of them is a technology that Telos has in all of Oh, not all? No, not all of our, but some of our uh, streaming encoders. Mm -hmm. And that's right. this codec that's called? XHE AAC, Extended High Efficiency AAC. That's a, that's a mouthful. Yes, it is. It's the latest <laughs> MPEG audio codec yeah. for stereo streaming. Uh, it is the successor of the very successful high efficiency AC version 2 codec, which is used in iTunes and many other places. Yeah, all of my, my radio stations are all streaming in HEAAC V2. Exactly, and now the success of that would be XHEAC, the one we're talking about. And I understand that you know, folks who follow audio coding are aware that encoding music at low bit rates and encoding voice at low bit rates, you really have different goals <coughs> in, in doing this. Music has some things that cover up uh, problems. Voice is right out there, it's bare. We think we can encode voice at a lower bit rate, but mm -hmm. not necessarily. Nope. But there are some voice codecs that sound great, and. I think you guys have come up with a solution for the voice versus music and even at a low bit rate, right? Right, right, right. In the past, you always had the challenge that there were dedicated codecs for speech coding at low bit rates. Uh, the most famous and at the time of that standardization, the up-to-date and most up-to-date codec was AMR Wideband Plus. Yes. Then you had the state-of-the-art music codecs for relatively low bitrate applications like high efficiency AC version 2. And then MPEG said uh, we need to have for the future one single codec that does it all, that can cover with, to cope with all the content and uh, be really used flexibly for all the applications <clears throat> without any predefinition of what the content would be and which codec to choose from. Because sometimes you can't. Even if you look at radio, uh, talk program, there will always be some jingle, music element, whatever in it, right. so you can't really predefine what codec to use. Um, in that case, uh, XHG is exactly the answer. And the, the goal for development within MPEG was to come up with a single codec that does the speech coding, the music coding, at very low bit rates. And that's exactly what was achieved, uh, topping both the state-of-the-art codecs at the time when that development started, uh, by far. So really exceeding the expectations at now, a great length. There's a, a demo app for Android that I've been using. It's from Radio Hogland. Mm -hmm. yeah? A-Media is a Norwegian company. Uh -huh. And, and it's, they're transmitting uh, XHEAAC at 16 kilobits. Right. So I'm listening to that. And, you know, of course, I'm only listening through a tiny speaker, so it's, I, it's hard to tell at the moment. I guess I could put <laughs> some headphones on. You uh, could but, definitely. But we want to get rid of the idea, though, that, that XHEAAC is only for low bit rates because it's a, a wide range. Exactly, as I was saying. It really is seen as the successor of the high efficiency AC version 2 codec. Um, and therefore, it covers all the applications high efficiency AC version 2 covered, or the speech codecs covered before. But in addition, it gives you these very low bitrate applications and, and use cases and can cover them as well. Um, if you look at the, the mid bitrate range, um, 32 kilobits per second, 64 kilobits per second. Mm -hmm. There you have some improvement over high efficiency AC version 2 with XHE. Okay. Okay. If you look at the very high bitrate ranges, 128, mm -hmm. um, you had transparent coding basically before and yeah. you still have transparent coding, so no loss there. Um, but the, the real difference is at the very low end. High efficiency AC version 2 um, and even AMR Wideband Plus, if you go to the very low bit rates, they had quality limitations, obviously. So very low bit rate for high efficiency AC version 2, maybe 32, 24 kilobits per second. With XHE AAC, we can go into, down to 16 kilobits per second stereo, 8 kilobits per second mono. In the case of DRM, even uh, 6 and 12 kilobits per second. So that's dramatic. And um, at that point, uh, granted, you don't have transparent quality anymore, it's not possible, but the quality you get is amazing and people say it's mind-blowing. What you can do now at 8 kilobits per second for streaming services, for example, is it's really amazing. Well, I look forward then to implementing XHEAC across a wide variety in an adaptive coding environment mm -hmm. where it, hopefully in the standard in uh, listening will be in, in the car, on your cell phones, whatever device. Uh, if, you, if you have a great connection, you could listen at 320 kilobits per second. And if you have a poor connection, you can listen at 12 kilobits per second until you're 
uh, your bandwidth improves. Exactly, and this is the modern application used by streaming uh, service providers. Um, basically, all the streaming services you, you have today, they have implemented this functionality of dynamic bitrate adaptation, which means that while you are in good coverage, you get um, the best possible quality in stereo and all the bells and whistles, but it sounds, it sounds transparent. Now, the problem appears when you go to a coverage area mobile that is outside the sweet spot. Yeah. If you drop from 4G to 2G, or if you are in a very crowded environment, in a stadium, in a shopping mall, wherever, um, it is hard to get those high bit rates through reliably. In the past, people were experienced drop, uh, dropouts. I mean, service just stopped for a yeah, moment. No audio, and that yeah. is really annoying. There's yeah. hardly anything more annoying than a service drop. You, you pull your phone out, you look at what's the matter. Uh, exactly. Uh, yeah. So, now, thanks to that XHE, the very low bitrate support, and the dynamic bitrate switching, which we are showing for the first time worldwide here at IBC 2016. Um, thanks to that, we can now just go to the low bitrates and keep the service on air. Eight kilobits per second. Um, you have a continuous service. You may notice some difference in audio quality but it stays online and um, in other applications such as um, upcoming countries um, like India and African uh, societies uh, we learned that it is very common that people actually just purchase a 2G contract is much cheaper not everybody can afford 3G 4G contracts they charge extra um, which means t that today the service providers streaming service providers are facing the challenge that they could only address 10% of the market they needed at least 3G, 4G. And even those customers, once they left the big cities, are back to 2G coverage, and again, the service was gone. So streaming providers really had a big, big time a challenge to, to, to reach the market now. Thanks to XHE, and uh, this is really a breakthrough for them, they can address everybody, all the mobile users, even on 2G, reliably, with a continuous service, good quality, and, uh, and this is a breakthrough. So you heard that radio stations and uh, content providers, anybody, if you're making streams, you need to consider making a really low bitrate stream that still sounds good and is perfectly usable. Alex, thank you so much for your time. I really appreciate it. If people want more, more information on this, of course, Telos has been a partner with Fraunhofer forever, and so we have information and include XHE AAC in some of our streaming codecs. And if you want information from Fraunhofer about the technology and how this works, where, where would they look? www.iis dot fraunhofer dot de slash audio. I'm Kirk Harnack along with Alex Zink at the IBC 2016. <laughs>